Hi everyone, we're here at Makers Machining again. We've got a, a nice project to talk about here today. We've got uh, some wheels that we're making, and uh, you can see how beautiful and shiny this thing is. It's just everything blends together perfectly, nice smooth uh, finishes there. Uh, but we, uh, we hard turn this thing. That's using uh, certain inserts that we have in the lathe to cut hardened steel. This, this part here started out as a, a 15 inch diameter slug of material that was about five and a half inches long. So we got some, some big slugs that we put up in the lathe and uh, we machined this thing close to this dimension, close to this shape, leaving some extra material on there that we can machine after heat treating. Um, we start out getting a CAD drawing and when we go to put the uh, uh, program in the lathe, uh, we, we have all the points on the CAD drawing that we use to, to get this uh, the shape here for what we're cutting. We machine the part. Uh, let me back up a little bit. Uh, the material that we're using is an alloy steel. It's uh, got a lot of carbon in it. I think there's 40 points of carbon and a few other elements that will make it a real tough, long-lasting part after it's been heat treated. Before heat treating, it would wear out pretty quick. But this thing's heat treated up to probably about 55 Rockwell, which is pretty darn hard. Um, so anyhow, we, we machine it, get it roughed in, and we leave roughly uh, 20, 30 thousandths per side that we will cut off afterwards. Because when this thing in the in the soft state, after we machined it, we send it out to get heat treated. It probably gets uh, heated up to like 1600 degrees or thereabouts, and then gets quenched in oil and that's what sets it into a hardened state. And then, they, then they'll then they draw it back, which means they heat it up. After it's cooled off from the quench, then they'll go back and they'll draw it back, which means they heat it up to a, a much lesser level, which gives it the hardness that is desired, and it also takes the brittleness out of it. So it, it, it refines the, uh, the condition of the material there. But uh, anyhow, we, uh, We'll come around here and look at this. It's, we've got basically the, the CAD view on here. Uh, it shows the wheel and it's mounted to an axle. There's some bearings inside there. There's a cap on the end with some bolts there that holds it onto the axle. But you can see it finishes at 14 and a half inches in diameter and five and three eighths tall. If you know what your decimal equivalents are, uh, five and th 0.375 is five and three eighths of an inch. So we, we've got those two basic dimensions, but all these other lines on here are basically radii, angles. They're, they're not uniform shapes in the, in the sense of a straight cut one way or the other. The only thing that's a straight cut is the, the face on each end and the bore through there and the bearing bores there. So we take that CAD drawing and we can use the actual uh, shape of the part in CAD as our tool path when we download the CAD drawing into the computer on our machine. So let's, let's go back over here by the part here for a second. Um, as I said, this thing is the finished part, it's all smooth, but the steps that we have to do on machining this, uh, after this part comes back from the heat, treat, heat treater, you can see it's, it's all scaly and junky looking, and here we've machined the other side of this already. You can see where our cut stops and where the uh, the second operation, we're going to cut the second operation here and get that smoothed out there. I'm going to turn this thing around so you can kind of see what the backside looks like. Uh, look at that nice bearing bore. That thing is just a, a beautiful finish. Uh, that's a hardened wheel already, so when we get in there to bore it, we can hold an exact size and get a superb finish on there. Some of the other areas here that we don't have to machine are here, they're just basically for weight reduction, I would say, but you still have a real thick cross section of the part here. You could almost see that again on the CAD drawing here. We're gonna turn the machine on here in a minute and, and do a little hard turning, but you can see the the flange here and and the wall there are, uh, the wall's a little bit thinner than the, the flange, but uh, you can see there's some mass in there because this thing here is, you know, taking a big load. I, I don't know, you know what the thing goes on. We we get a print, we make the part. But uh, so we're gonna put this thing in here. But before we do that, let's let's take a look at some of the uh, the tools that we use. If you look up here, there's a round ceramic tool bit right there. Ceramic is good for hard turning material. Carbide 
may cut for a little bit, but it doesn't hold up. But ceramic is even harder, and it will go in and cut these profiles, especially on a round surface. When you get into where you're doing the bearing bore, then you've got to use a, a square tool insert that uh, maybe has... Is that ceramic there, too? Yeah, the bottom one. The bottom, bottom one here. Yep. Okay, that there's a ceramic tool bit in that boring bar right there. But, uh, again, everything that we make on this part here has to be true and concentric. The bearing journals are concentric with the outside diameter. So, uh, the cuts that we make on the first side to give us the bearing bore and the, the OD cut here, that's all turned at one time. So, we can indicate on there ID. with the uh, and, and and the ID we, we indicate a couple of points there to make sure everything's running too true you could indicate one place and it may run pretty true but there may be some jostling around on the other part well why do we why do we hard turn this well first of all a, a bearing bore is going to have a tolerance of a few tenths of a thousand if you measure a piece of hair it's two and a half thousandths Bearings, when they get used, there's recommended fits that the outer race has inside of a bore, so you have to bore it to a real accurate size. Uh, we can do that with these ceramic tools. Uh, but the main reason to do uh, the hard turning is when you heat treat this thing, that material moves on you, twists, even a big massive piece like this twists around. And in this case, we leave uh, you know 20 or 25 thousandths per side because the ca the uh, the material seems to shrink a little bit, and you know we've got that hollowed out area here in the in the center, and you know that that gives a, a weird cross section there. So when that thing gets thrown in a it's red hot, it gets thrown in a, a bath full of oil, uh, things move. So uh, we found that you know you've got to leave enough material on there to get the uh, Whole thing to clean up. I mean, this whole thing is 100% machined after heat treat, as you can see by that finish one that we looked at there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of the way here, and we're gonna turn this guy on here. And uh, we we don't have the coolant on right now, but you'll be able to see some of the cuts that are going on here. Safety glass is on. We're not closing the door here, but uh, you let me get right in here got this round insert that's going to come in and start cutting it off. You don't hear any noise. You see the red chips coming off of there. We have to make a few passes maybe. Uh, he's doing partially on the radius there. If you can see that, that comes around. CNC lathes are super accurate and that gives you the ability to make these fine cuts like this. We, we've uh, done a couple other projects. Right now we're kind of cutting the air because we don't know exactly where we're going to find material that has to be cut. So how many passes do we make on this thing to finish it? Okay, so we're making 10 similar moves and trying to get that off of there. I think you guys all met met Joe here a few times, so he's uh, he's the, the lathe guru over here that uh, he writes all his own programs, makes his own CAD drawings gets the machine set up uh, there's there's a lot going on here you can see he's got the tooling situated in his turret every other station there's a, a tool because if, here we go we're cutting the, the radius at the bottom of the flange right there take a little pass on there now he's going to come back and uh, go and make another pass here most likely zips right over there and moves in. <laughs> yeah, you don't have time to get out of the way. Uh, so he's going to be moving that around. I, I was saying, you know, we've got to situate these tools over here so when one tool is being used, the other tool is well out of the way of the jaws and the chuck that are swinging around there. And when the turret indexes, you know, we just, we just made a move away and came back in and started doing the same pass. But uh, if we do an index where the tool goes and changes tools to do, let's say the boring bar for the for the bearing races on the ID. Our turret has to go all the way back and get out of the way so when it swings around, it doesn't it doesn't hit the the part in the chuck or the chuck or anything else. So there's you got to think about how you set the uh, 
uh, tooling up and the turret on your lathe. And also, you might want to balance the tooling in your lathe so you don't have all the weight on one side of the turret because then it's harder for the uh, turret to index around if you've got a lot of tooling in the same place. So yeah, we're getting getting close to starting another pass in this this fillet that's in here. Our uh, our part that we are making here, uh, we get dimensions from our customer. Sometimes they supply our customers will supply a CAD drawing. Sometimes they give us a, a fax copy, which we have to redraw. It's better if we get the, the completed drawing from them, and they uh, and then we don't have to mess around with it because you could you could try to draw something sometimes you transpose the number and then you've got a problem. But uh, you can't hear it so much in here. But uh, I, I should have mentioned it the other day. We were talking about cutting that spline in the lathe, and we were turning the part. And with some of these uh, higher end CNC lathes, as you are turning. Uh, and you go from the OD down to the ID, you'll hear the chuck increase in RPM because they want to keep a constant chip load on the on the cutter, on the insert, the carbide or ceramic. So surface feet per minute and your RPM and your feed rate all kind of ties together. Uh, we're able to keep a uniform chip load on the uh, on the tool. That way it lasts longer and you get optimum life on your tool. After you do this for a while, you become a student of speeds and speeds and carbides. And when, when you get about 45 minutes of cutting on, a, on an edge, it's time to switch the insert because they can explode and break and then everything's shot. I think I've mentioned that before. Okay, you can see here, uh, after the first two passes, we didn't get any cleanup on this angle here, but now, uh, this is the third pass. We're getting virtually all of the angle to clean up here. I'm sure the next cut will finish up there, but we have to get in there and go to a certain size so it's the right diameter. When, uh, when we set the lathe up here, we've got an automatic tool setter in here. It, it's folded back into the machine. It's protected there, but we can use a tool setter, the arm comes down, and we come in catch uh, the X and Z axis sides of the tool so we know exactly where the tool is in the lathe. And, and then we'll make some cuts that, that we can get a measurement so we know. Uh, it gets us one of the thousandth of an inch. Uh, we're comfortable with that. So anyhow, we're not gonna, we're not gonna watch the whole process here because it's gotta go and do the the ID on this. Joe had already put this thing in here, indicated everything true, and uh, we, we started this video here when he's ready to start on this last pass here. But you can you can see the chips coming off there. They are red hot. When and then they then they turn blue after they get away from the from the cut. The temperature of that steel coming off of there right now is probably 1300 degrees, the red steel. When it gets just a short distance away and down into the pan, it turns blue, which is probably uh, six or 700 degrees, and then it gets cooler after that. Um, so it's, it's hot material, but the reason they use ceramic is because it dissipates the heat. The heat of the, the chip, it, it goes into the chip, or the heat of the cut goes into the chip, and the ceramic's doing the cutting, and ceramic is the same thing that is on the, uh, nose of the space shuttle and it dissipates heat faster than the rest of the spaceship so it uh, it doesn't burn up when it enters the atmosphere. Uh, I'm not going to touch my finger on there to see how smooth it is because there might be a sharp edge there and, and I don't want to get cut there but uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, that, that uh, shape there on this wheel is not real hot. Joe maybe when that thing gets, gets out of its cut there you can stop it and I'll I'll see if I can put my hand on it and see how hot that thing is. Yeah, normally we we run coolant on there. Maybe after we after we get this thing out, uh, I'll we'll stop the chuck for a second and I'll see if how hot that feels. Then when we go back to do our other cuts, we'll turn the uh, coolant on. But well, I think our time is up here. There's a bunch of chips came out. We can get a second here. Okay, shut that thing down if you can right there. Okay. 
not even hot not even hot so all the heat went out into the chips okay that's all we're gonna do for now we've covered our time so hopefully maybe you can still hear us but we'll see uh, we'll talk to you again here soon so long <laughs>